Now, what is NAC? We've heard about it. It's been buzzing about the media as of late. NAC is a supplement, although it's also a drug. So we know that the FDA has approved NAC as a drug to treat different types of situations, one of them being um, acetaminophen overdose or Tylenol damage to the liver. So it's classified technically as a drug, and the WHO considers NAC an essential drug. But if you live in the US or Canada or Australia, NAC is actually an over-the-counter supplement. So what exactly is NAC? NAC is a precursor to the amino acid called cysteine. So there's N-acetylcysteine, and then there's cysteine. And NAC as a supplement is actually much better absorbed and better tolerated orally when people take oral doses. Um, and so it's just better to use, if you're trying to get more cysteine uh, through supplementation, it's better for you to use N-acetylcysteine than say L-cysteine, which would be uh, an over-the-counter available amino acid. So again, NAC is a precursor to the amino acid cysteine. Remember, amino acids are the building blocks to proteins. So all the proteins that your body puts together are derived predominantly from amino acids. And cysteine is one of the, what, what is considered non-essential amino acids, but uh, meaning your body can make cysteine. It actually produces cysteine from another amino acid called methionine. But there are certain circumstances where your body can't make enough. Right, And so those types of situations, those circumstances, are what we've referred to as conditional, right? So conditionally essential is, is oftentimes the way you'll see that written. So we know that, again, that cysteine is a conditionally essential amino acid that when certain situations exist, the body cannot produce enough of it from methionine. And so getting more either through diet or through supplementation becomes necessary. An example of that would be trauma or injury or surgery. This, this is a situation where the body, in order to heal or repair from the damage, will require more cysteine to do that work. So again, if we're talking about NAC. NAC is a supplement, also classified as a drug. Um, we use it very, very commonly for a number of situations, which we'll, we'll talk about shortly. But it is the supplement that is the precursor to the amino acid cysteine. Okay. So let's talk about some of the key functions of NAC. These are just some of the things that we are fairly certain NAC is responsible for or can help us do. One of the things is that it can help chelate metals. So it binds toxic metal, things like aluminum and mercury and lead, and it can help expel those from the body. So it's oftentimes used uh, in a number of ways medicinally as a metal chelator or a metal binder. It also produces glutathione. Now glutathione, I many of you have heard of this, this is the most powerful antioxidant in the body. It helps the liver take out the trash, so to speak. So when, uh, when a person has low glutathione, they're susceptible to a host of different types of problems, including liver damage, especially if they do things like take prescription medications or drink alcohol regularly that are metabolized by the liver. And so those things can deplete glutathione. Well, cysteine, in acetylcysteine specifically helps to generate or to build or make or produce glutathione. Now, in acetylcysteine, through the production of glutathione, has a very, very powerful antioxidant action as well, but it also has an anti-inflammatory action, so it can help with inflammation. If you missed my show last week on the immune system, you can check that out because we talked a lot about cysteine, N-acetylcysteine specifically being used. A number of studies coming out of, uh, if you go to the WHO's website, a number of studies showing that N-acetylcysteine actually acts as an anti-inflammatory for people that have COVID or people that get sick with colds and flus. We also know that it's a mucolytic. What does that mean? That means it breaks up mucus. Now, what else is floating around in the news uh, these days is the fact that a lot of these over-the-counter cough medicines um, designed to help bring relief to people with colds and flus for the past 30 years, and they're now saying they didn't work. They never worked. They actually are ineffective. And so, um, 
you know, instead of buying something like that over the counter, you might look at supplementation with N-acetylcysteine for its powerful mucolytic ability. So if you've got a cold or a flu and you've got a lot of congestion in your chest and a lot of mucus buildup, maybe in the sinuses, uh, N-acetylcysteine very, very effective at helping with that. So if we look at, you know, what some of the research reviews have to say on N-acetylcysteine, um, we'll blow this diagram up for you, but this was published in the journal Antioxidants, and so uh, you can find this on the National Institute of Health's website. But direct antioxidant action. So we know that NAC has a, an actual antioxidant component itself beyond just working as producing glutathione. So we know that NAC makes glutathione, which is an antioxidant, but we also know that NAC has direct antioxidant function. And in some conditions, it acts as an antioxidant uh, for oxidant species, so um, again, helps to protect your body from free radical damage. We know that it has a chelating action, and this is what I was referring to earlier. Chelating uh, basically refers to the binding of transition metal or heavy toxic metals. Again, so it binds to those and it helps those be more readily excreted by the body. We know that it has an indirect antioxidant action, so direct function but also indirect in that it helps producing glutathione, and that's what this is referring to here. We also know that it has an anti-inflammatory action. The mechanism is that NAC suppresses NF-kappa-B uh, activation and subsequent cytokine production. So if you've heard that term cytokine, these are little chemicals secreted by white blood cells that can induce inflammation, chemicals like TNF-alpha, tumor necrosis factor alpha. We know that it has a mucolytic response. It, it breaks down disulfide bonds. We don't need to talk about the chemistry, but basically what that does is it allows it to break up mucus. And so these are, again, in summary, some of the main functions of N-acetylcysteine um, when taken. And there are different routes of excretion or routes, rather, of administration. Um, and we'll talk more about this, but there's oral, intravenous, and then there's inhalation. Me mechanisms, and we'll get into some of the dosing that if you're thinking about using NAC as a supplement, we'll get into some of the ways that it's administered here shortly. Now, something else I want to get into, some of the other effects that, that NAC can have. Let's blow this image up for you. So, um, you look here, we've got, I, I said earlier that we can, we can take NAC and it's a precursor to cysteine. And I told you earlier as well that methionine, the amino acid methionine, can also be consumed and that also helps get to cysteine. And then from there, we have all these other types of functions that different research studies have shown to be um, you know, outcomes of using NAC. One is to lower oxidative stress. Well, this is what we were referring to as an antioxidant. Antioxidants, kind of the, the easiest way to think about an antioxidant without all the chemistry is Antioxidants help us age gracefully. Um, some people talk about anti-aging medicine. You hear a lot about that, uh, you know, in, in um, like different magazines or different press where they're trying to sell products for vanity reasons, but there's really no such thing as anti-aging, but there is such a thing as graceful aging. We don't want to age at an accelerated pace. Antioxidants help ensure that that doesn't happen. We also know that cysteine improves insulin resistance. So there's a component, and I'll show you some research studies here in a minute on um, how it actually can help to do that, but it helps insulin work better. We, and remember that when your insulin doesn't work, this is um, the outcome of, of this can be diabetes or blood sugar problems. Now this can also lead to what are called ages. And you see this term AGE, small letter S. That stands for advanced glycation end products. What, what ages are, are Basically, they're damaged proteins, and the reason they're damaged is because of sugar. Again, we're talking about diabetes here, so the diabetes, the excessive glucose as a result of insulin resistance leads to the formation of more of these ages, and these ages accelerate the aging process. That's why the acronym is AGE, right? And so these ages have been linked to a number of different types of inflammatory disorders and dementia, so again, we know that cysteine can help lower ages. It helps to control them. We know that it also improves the bioavailability of NO, nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a very, very powerful biomolecule. In part, what it does is it helps to regulate 
blood pressure, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. And so we also know it modulates other vasoactive systems as well as it helps or improves uh, individuals with renal dysfunction. There are a number of studies that have shown people with chronic kidney disease, actually there's some improvement uh, parameters that are shown when people are taking N-acetylcysteine. So again, if you've got insulin resistance, if you've got um, renal or chronic kidney disease, if you've got blood pressure problems, this might be something you wanna talk with your doctor about, is talking to them about whether or not N-acetylcysteine is right for them. Um, we, could, we could say it like that, as so many commercials do. This actual, this study is a review on the effect of cysteine on blood pressure. And so if you look here at table four, this is a list of human trials. So these are human studies. Uh, there are a number of animal studies that show the same thing, but I wanted to give you a resource that shows you actual human studies where um, when, when the N-acetylcysteine was given in the doses and, and the effects or impacts on blood pressure. So you can see in this first trial of human, humans, we had 1.2 grams a day of N-acetylcysteine for one week, right? So this was, this is really, this is a relatively small dose, it's a relatively small period of time, just a week. And what they found was reductions in systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure. And so, you know, again, systolic is the top number, you know, when you, when the doctor's taking your blood pressure, if you're not, if you're not familiar, it's that top number. And the diastolic is that bottom number So again, if you're taking your blood pressure, just understanding what that, what that means. But again, this N-acetylcysteine in this trial reduced both of them, the top number and the bottom number. Remember, systolic is the pressure on your vessels when your heart is beating. Diastolic is the pressure on your vessels when your heart is at rest. So again, that, that's why that difference, that's why that bottom number is typically much lower. But again, it, it reduced both. In this other study, they used 1.8 grams a day orally of NAC, and this study was done only for three weeks. Again, very short uh, studies, and what they saw within 24 hours is a reduction of systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And then this next study here, you can see 1.2 grams of NAC given a day. They also, in this study, used arginine. Arginine um, is, a, is a precursor to nitric oxide, so that's one of the reasons why they were combining or using arginine in that study, is they were trying to get a bigger impact or an effect on nitric oxide. Remember, the better, more efficient your body is capable of making nitric oxide, the more resilient and elastic your blood vessels are, so that's why it helps with blood pressure. When your blood vessels are stiff, pressure goes up, but when you produce adequate nitric oxide, again, arginine, L-arginine being a precursor for that, um, it allows for better vasodilation, vasoconstriction, so they combined the two, and they did this dosing structure for six months. What did they find over a six-month period of time? Reduction of systolic and diastolic blood pressure, but also mean arterial blood pressure. So um, human trials using N-acetylcysteine, if you've got high blood pressure, again, you might just want to talk to your doctor whether or not NAC is right for you.